I grew up, of course, playing a ton of games, and I knew that games were what I really wanted to do. I had no idea how to get involved in them, but um, I ended up going to uh, Drexel University in Philly, and they have an amazing uh, game design program there. And I actually, we were lucky enough to be at the right place at the right time where there was a brand new program opening up called the Entrepreneurial Game Studio. And it was kind of this program for students to uh, take, a lot of times when you're going to college, creating games, unfortunately, a lot of your games just end up dying, kind of like in the classroom. You turn it in as an assignment and then it's dead. Um, but there's a really cool program that started up for getting students to release their games commercially. Um, and so we joined that project. I was one of the first members to be accepted um, and ended up forming Gossamer Games, uh, which is you know something we're still doing like six years later, I think. So um, yeah. yeah, it was kind of being at the right place at the right time, but I knew I wanted to get into games just because of, uh, I've seen kind of firsthand how impactful the medium is. And I think out of all the entertainment mediums that exist out there today, I think there's the potential uh, to have the most impact um, working in video games. And so I knew that that was where I wanted to go. And um, it's so exciting to be working on uh, all types of projects that are kind of shaping the future of uh, what the medium can be. I guess I always wanted to develop games. Um, ever since I was little, I remember I would just think about games, um, not in a programming sense. I never really programmed until I got to college, um, but I, would just kind of draw out like the levels on paper and like what the characters were and what kind of game it was. I would kind of like make descriptions for them, I guess. But yeah, getting to Drexel, I I graduated Drex I graduated high school in 2015. So then probably in like 2017, I joined EGS and I was lucky enough that in like one of the first meetings there, uh, I actually saw Tom speak about Soul and they needed a programmer. And I was like, eh, I'll just shoot my resume, I guess. And then I actually got the job there. So I started working um, just part-time whenever I wasn't doing schoolwork um, on Gossamer Games for Soul in like 2017. That was like the first like real game project I ever worked on. I hadn't really worked on anything that was more than like a two-week project before that. So that's where I got most of my development experience. And then um, just through um, Drexel, pretty much otherwise. I just graduated last year, um, and we had a big um, senior project that we had worked on for about nine months to a year uh, in like a city builder that was sort of like where I got a lot of my other experience. So both, basically all my experience can be summed up into those two projects. <laughs> well, I, I, I learned to code through games um, with the with the release of or when when John Carmack uh, made the decision to uh, open source uh, the id tech engines I I, I, I I used them and I and I started uh, reading them and I started learning how to hack them up and I started taking them apart and um, that's how I learned to code that's how I learned C and and later C++ with with id tech 3 um, and then I went to film school <laughs> then I worked in broadcasting then I ended up in tech and then I focused on security and somehow I'm I'm back to um, doing what originally kind of gave me the passion for for um, you know development in the first place and and you know I I've always been a gamer um, I I you know like Chris spent a lot of time you know thinking up how I would design this and uh, reverse engineering you know how they designed that was something else that I did and and you know um, kind of similar to what what Tom sort of said earlier you know I it, you have a real ability to reach people um, what really fascinated me um, you know with games was um, just the, this whole storytelling aspect, this whole ability to reach so many people and affect so many people, um, you know, uh, emotionally and just and just, uh, you know, um, just just it, it's it's powerful. And and I think using, um, you know, games in a way of of, of just um, interacting and, and to to just uh, really creatively, you know, express, um, you know, yourself is is just a really exciting thing. Um, and, and I just I just have always been um, drawn to it. And so. Um, I, I don't know that I consider myself to be a game developer at this point, though I am pretty well versed in, in uh, Unreal and Unity, and, and I've been kind of uh, along the edges of the industry for, you know, um, most of my life. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've been trying to develop games for forever, um, and, and so it's, it's, uh, just, it's just always been a passion of mine.
Yeah, so we're Gossamer Games. We are a tiny independent video game studio uh, based in Philadelphia. And I think there are like five of us working on this project now. Uh, so very small, but we work on a variety of projects uh, specializing in adventure games, narrative games. Um, and yeah, we work it on platforms, mobile, console, desktop, uh, on all different types of projects with clients and also on our own original work. In terms of working with Okta, um, we were actually, it was really cool. We were approached by, uh, we have an awesome video game community, uh, development community in Philadelphia. And so we were talking with one of uh, the studios around the area and they had actually gotten in touch with someone and they didn't have the capacity of taking on any more work. And so they reached out to us and we were like, hey, this sounds like a really cool project. We think y'all would be a really great fit for it. And we were like, oh, that sounds amazing. So we got in touch and uh, yeah, the rest is history. We were really interested in creating something a little bit different and something that, you know, like most tech marketing departments aren't really expanding into the video game world. Um, and specifically with developers, you know, like there's such a massive overlap between developers and gamers. And we were really hoping to create a game that can capture the experience of, you know, what what a developer faces every day in the office, whether it's actually trying to get coding done or, you know, dealing with coworkers and dealing with productivity offsites where you don't actually get anything done. Uh, so we wanted to, to, you know, meet that intersection of developers and gamers and kind of speak to some of the pain points that developers experience, but also make it fun and make it light and make it something that, you know, you would want to play on a Saturday, not just something that's, that's work related. It was a really cool process talking about, um, creating a game for developers, capturing our experience. And that was a really cool opportunity for us because uh, we could kind of see ourselves in the, the protagonist and, and the player's perspective. And so we wanted to create a game that was capturing uh, a lot of the, I know, so I'm on the like production direction kind of side of things. And so maybe Chris can speak more to this, but I do know that I am always a person bothering Chris <laughs> as he's coding. Um, and it was really cool working on a game where we wanted to capture that dynamic. Um, Cause I think it's probably common across software development, not even just video game development, but you'll have be working on something deep in the code. And it just seems like the universe is conspiring against you to pull you out of that as soon as you're getting into like your flow and, and uh, solving the problems you're trying to solve. So uh, we wanted to create a game about that dynamic and uh, really create a game that was kind of hybrid simulation, hybrid narrative um, that was all about the experience of developing. With something like this, it's so different um, and it's, it's so new and it's, you know, it's not something that you really expect to come from a company like Okta. Uh, and we're so excited about it that we just want to share it and we really hope that it, people are receptive to it and that people want to play it. Um, and also we're hoping that people are going to learn a little bit from it and, you know, maybe like be inquisitive. And if you learn something about auth that you didn't know before, then like that's a win for us. Um, so, you know, we just, we really want to provide it more as a sense of enjoyment and maybe a resource. Um, and we feel like something like that should be free. First and foremost, I think I want to know if we did a good job of capturing what it's like to be a developer in an office environment. Um, like, I, I hope it's relatable and I hope that, you know, it's funny and it's tongue in cheek and like the humor comes across. Um, but yeah, I, I just I want to know, did we hit the nail on the head? Did we get it right? Is this, is this what your life is like um, or are we totally off base? And also, I want to know if you had fun. Like that to me is the most important thing. Did you enjoy playing the game? Um, did you learn anything? Would you play it again? I think I think just, you know, it, it's really basic, but I think for me, those are the most important, important things to hear. I am very curious to know how many of your coworkers you see presented or, or portrayed in the game. Because um, I think it's very true when we were first sitting down and going over some of the scripts and some of the characters, um, I could totally tell, like, I think, uh, who was I identifying with? Um, but I, I could see, like, all of my coworkers and people that I worked with in the past, I could see, like, little elements of their personality kind of all scattered around. So I guess, yeah, like, did we hit that? Uh, and um, 
yeah, did we kind of capture uh, exactly what we said before? Did we capture kind of the feeling of uh, the trials and tribulations of being a developer and kind of the balance between doing your work and being sucked away from, uh, you know, by all these distractions? I, I would love to, to learn um, if any of the game caused them to um, have interest in um, aspects of security or development of security that they didn't have before. Um, you know, I, I, we didn't really want to spend the time um, making you, uh, forcing you to to go through uh, a, an educational uh, a thing, if you will. But uh, we did put in there a lot of really um, exciting introductions to security, to how hackers uh, will exploit, you know, a workplace, uh, exploit developers specifically, uh, things like OAuth, and and you know, there's 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 a whole bunch of um, you know concepts in there that that um, I'm interested, like, uh, what, what is, uh, you know, did that make you question and want to learn more about security? And, and uh, have you been able to, to, uh, to find those resources to learn more? Um, if not, you know, we, we really want to, um, you know, uh, help you with that. In an ideal world, I would love for this to be an evolving project. Um, I think that there were a lot of really great ideas that we had that, you know, we just didn't have the time to fully put into motion. Um, and there's there's definitely a backlog of things that I think were just really brilliant and we didn't have the time for. Um, so I would love to see some of those things implemented, I guess. Uh, that just depends on, you know, how many people want to play. And if it seems like it's something that people are enjoying, then I would imagine that we will definitely, you know, we're going to keep this as a living thing um, as long as people want to play it.